In this lesson, we're going to talk about verbs that take the genitive or dative case. And really, when we're talking about taking, we're saying working together, a verb that, of course, will have a nominative subject expressed or unexpressed, but then we'll take a genitive or dative, what we, what we might call an object. Uh, but the elephant in the room here is that uh, this is not the accusative case which we know to be our normal direct object case. So the, these are a slight exception. So let's start with what we know um, and take an example from the text. Uh, the citizens tried to persuade the judge. So hoi politai. Uh, circumflex over that long iota before the short alpha iota diphthong at the end of a word and then tried to persuade epithon from patho, but then imperfect here, conative imperfect, the judge, ton cretain. So masculine, sorry, let me make that a little bit more clear. That's a new, not a upsilon. So the citizens or citizens tried to persuade the judge. So here we have nominative subject, verb, that then takes a direct object in the accusative. This is what we're used to seeing. These citizens are doing something to the judge. What are they doing? They are persuading. Good. But let's now think about a different sort of example. So let's say that I used to be the ruler of the, the country. So ruler, we know, is to, to rule, I rule, is basileo. So we want to turn this into, well, let's, let's write out the, uh, the English up here. So I used to rule the country. So this is going to be taken care of by the verb, and this is going to be our object. This is, you know, accusative in English, but this is not going to be accusative in Greek. So I used to rule. Basileo is I am ruling. So we want to drop that accent because it's probably going to need to change. Drop the personal ending. So then if we wanted it to be a past tense and in the indicative we need to add that augment and then we want to make it first person imperfect so that's an omicron new ending so e basileon short here skips over the diphthong e bas e basileon i said that kind of awkwardly let me say that again e basileon i used to rule and then we're talking about the country um but we translate this as I used to rule, um, but really we might want to say that it means I was the ruler. And then it, if we express it that way in English, we need to inject an of before the country. So we need to specify what I was the ruler of. Well, this of turns out to be a genitive relationship, right? So we'll have of the country. Uh, country, remember, is kora. But we want to make it or kora. We, we want to make sure that it is in the genitive. So we make that, well, that's going to become a long alpha. Well, art already was. I've just written it out. And now we've got koras. And then what's the uh, feminine article, uh, genitive singular? That's taste. It's a bit long of a uh, tau leg there. Ebasiloan tes cores, coras. I was the ruler of the country. But we might translate this also as I used to rule the country. So this is a situation where we have a verb seeming to take the genitive. Were we doing this straight from English and into Greek, we'd be tempted to make this the country accusative. But because of the nature of this verb, basileo, which might be translated as I was the ruler of dot dot dot, uh, we need to 
sub supplement this with a genitive. Um, linguists will disagree whether this now is an accusative, well, uh, now is a direct object. It's obviously genitive, but is it an object? Well, somewhat. Um, some prefer to reserve the term object for anything that's only in the accusative, uh, but we can see that it, this verb takes the genitive, it works together with the genitive. So we have this one verb, basilewo, and when, when you look it up in the, the dictionary or in Shalmerdine, you'll see the, the first principal part, the first person singular present active form, and then you'll see this, plus gen, gen standing for genitive. So, so this is going to be your dictionary entry. This is how you're going to know that what you're dealing with here is a verb that takes a non-accusative object, it takes a genitive object. So we have one more of these non-accusative verbs in this chapter. Make this eraser as big as possible. We'll start over. All right, so that was the genitive. Now let's get a nice color here, maybe a kind of periwinkle, and work with the dative. So the verb here that we're going to encounter in this chapter, and we'll count, counter many of these of both sorts, but we're going to start small, first with uh, the genitive, which again was basileo, and now the dative, which is going to be pisteo. This uh, pist uh, is related to patho, which was... Uh, uh, persuade, but, but this is believe. This is believe, trust. And this takes the dative. Again, if we were going to see it in the dictionary, plus dative. Um, so uh, let's see. The, let's say the, the young man, the young men believe uh, Xerxes. All right. So hoi, nea, niai, just nea, niai. Uh, remember here, this is a masculine first declension. Uh, so, if, let's let's take a, a little pause uh, and write out its paradigm. So, nea nias, nominative, singular. Let's go to the genitive. Nea ni u, dative is nea nia with the iota subscript here again. That has to be a long alpha, and then accusative. Nanian. And then when we go into the plural, which is what we have here, nanii, nanion, again, because it's first declension, always that omega nu. Uh, so this is singular, and this is plural. Dative, we're going to get nanice. That's a long diphthong. And then finally, nanias, long alpha, accent still on the iota. That was a little diversion. Really, what we just have here is the nominative masculine first declension plural, neanii, the young men. So we're going to say the, the young men. Let's get back and maybe put up an English version. So the young men believe, are believing, Xerxes. And let's imagine that we've already talked about the Xerxes. So if we get back into our kind of periwinkle, uh, we're going to want Xerxes to be in the dative. So he's masculine, so we're going to give him a masculine article. That we're using the article to say the Xerxes because we've already talked about Xerxes in this fictional context. And now we want to make him um, a dative singular. So get our X sound, our epsilon. So there we have the two size, the capital and the lowercase. And now we want to make this Xerxes, which is a, let's give him the, the, the nominative form here, which is one of these type A long eta forms. So for the dative singular masculine, it has this yoda subscript under the eta. The eta maintains though, and then the accent stays right there. So two or four Xerxes is what we have. But now we need to have the word for believe. So we have it up here, pistelo. So let's write that out, pistel. So we have our stem, and then we have a third person plural here, the young men, masculine, but that doesn't matter for the purposes of uh, 
verb tense or verb forms. So this is going to be pistaousi. And no need for the new movable here because we're just following up uh, with a, a consonant here. So let me write that again. That was a little sloppy. Well, you all are used to this by now. All right, and then we, there we have it, pistaousi. So short skips over. We're back, as always, with the present indicative active to the stem, pistaousi. The young man, young man, hoi neaniai, pistaousi to xerxi. So the young men believe, but we might want to say believe in or trust to. That's why we're having this dative here. This idea of belief isn't something hard. You're not hitting something. You're not moving something. You're driving. Same with ruling. These verbs that take a genitive or dative tend to pair with think concepts that aren't quite so physical. Of course, when you're ruling, you could be a tough ruler and really hit your, you know, uh, subjects, I suppose. But that's not the point. You're you're the ruler of something, and you believe in or for or to something. This is why this takes the data. So the young men believe in Xerxes, and we can say that Xerxes was the ruler, you know, Masalewo, of Persia. That's how we would express that. So hopefully this is clear. Um, it's, it's irregular. We're not going to know all the times that a certain verb would take a dative or genitive. It will never be something that's as physical as hitting or stopping or something like that, but uh, when we get into concepts like rule and belief and a few others, uh, we're going to find that genitives and datives might pop up as what seem to be direct objects, but are really just kind of working together with the main verb. See you next time.